smiles does it take to be happy how many times do you have to feel lonely before you get the chance to meet someone before you get to meet someone like you how many songs can you write about heartbreak how to go when you're fed up with mistakes. hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Courtney and this is creative on the cheap I am so excited for today's video. I thought it would never come. It has been several months in the making, but it's finally here. This is the Dollar Tree Mystery Box Challenge. And what it is, is this. There are eight YouTubers participating in this collaboration, and this is what we were tasked with. We were each given a name of another YouTuber in the group. We were then to go to Dollar Tree and purchase seven to 10 items. Two of the items had to be what we would consider challenge items. We were then to box them up, send them to our person, and each one of us is gonna open the box on camera so you can see what we receive, and then the fun begins. We have to try to create one DIY, three DIYs, whatever we can with the items in the box. We can use stuff from our craft stash if we want to, to help enhance the projects. Now, before I tell you who sent me my box, let me tell you who I sent my box to. So you're gonna wanna click the link down below and that will take you to Whitney from Whiskey and Wind. I sent her my box. She's gonna open it. You can see what I sent her and then she'll tell you who she sent to and then you'll get in a nice little loop and see kind of all of us in an order. Now, who sent me my box, which is right here. I have not opened it. I have no idea what's inside. It's from Caitlin from Crafts by Caitlin. I am so excited. I love her channel. She is so sweet, does the best projects, and I can't wait to get in here and see what it is. So let's dig into the box. Got my box cutter. Let's open this box. Oh my gosh, I can't. Like, this is like Christmas morning. I'm not even joking. Oh dear. Okay. I'm scared because she, Caitlin, can whip out some seriously awesome Dollar Tree DIYs. All of the ladies in this collaboration are like awesome at Dollar Tree DIYs. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Can't wait to see. Oh, okay. So she has a little. Ooh. Okay, this is wrapped. This is the first thing I see in the box. Oh. Oh, it's a little sweet card from Caitlin. She sent a little card. Is that not so sweet? Okay. She says this is a little gift for me. How sweet is that? Like I'm telling you, she's so sweet. Okay. She said that this is from Dollar General. She said if anyone asks. All right. Let me see. Oh. sweet is that oh she's so sweet oh look at that it's a little oh get the tag out of the way how cute is that it's got it says hello it's got the little ribbon oh thank you Caitlin that is so sweet I love that now let's get into the box okay all right first item okay first item is this it says a year of firsts sorry you guys are going to catch my lighting rings here um okay it's a little sign decor all right okay work with that okay a welcome home with the little knob okay i'm nervous to see what these challenge items are gonna be oh how cute okay my dollar tree has never had these a little wooden home sign that is so cute she has a really good DIY or Dollar Tree. Okay. Little wooden with the, this is a gingerbread house or a little house on it, I guess. There we go. Okay, I'm excited. Okay. Don't worry, be happy. Oh, this is a challenge item. Okay. She brought, labeled it. Challenge item number one. You can use one or all three in this part. Okay. Don't worry, be happy. All right. My challenge item has a little froggy dude on this triangle all right oh cuteness look at these i've never seen these before 
My Dollar Tree has never, how cute. Cute but fierce, cool, and clever. All right, so it's like three of them. They have little animal heads. There's a fox, a tiger, and then the frog. All right, challenge item number one. I think I should make up like a point system. Like we get one million points if we use one. All right, some wood plaques. Okay. She got me some good stuff, man. Our adventure fund. Okay, a little frame. It's got the distressed and rustic. That's focusing on my face. There we go. So a little shadow box. I see challenge. I'm getting down to challenge right, challenge item number two. Oops. Let me unwrap this. Alright. Okay, here's the little flower stand. It came apart, but that's okay. Just be stapled in there. Cute little frame. Tulip. Like, hi, I'm excited. All right, bless our home. There we go. All right, this has got to be, yeah, I see a sticky note. So this is challenge item number two. Okay, challenge item number two is a garden dish. All right, here's my challenge item number two. Okay, garden dish. All right, all right, all right. And there we have it. Empty box. All my items, you saw them there. Okay, I've got to get cracking and see what I'm going to come up with. I'm super excited. So let's get in to the video. For the first DIY, I will be working with one of the challenge items, which was this garden dish. Now, when I got it, it was a little cracked, but that crack is what gave me my idea of what to do to it. So I just put a little bit of Gorilla Glue on the crack, and then once I get the label off, I'm going to attach this garden dish to one of the Dollar Tree candlesticks that I had laying around in my stash. continue to hold out for Dollar Tree to come up with a different candlestick, what I do to change the one that they always have in stock is I take either a paper towel roll or a wrapping paper cardboard roll and I cut um, up a, a slit basically and I end up with two pieces and then I take the two pieces and I wrap them around the candlestick. And with some painter's tape, I just wrap that around the cardboard and that secures it. And then it gives this candle a more of a pillar type look instead of just the standard Dollar Tree candlestick look. It's all assembled and now I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle and I'm going to paint one coat and let it dry all the way and then I will go in with a second coat and um, I'm sorry every time I watch this clip <laughs> I feel like I'm like painting with melted chocolate. Does anybody else want to eat chocolate when you're watching this? I don't know maybe it's just me. Um, so again you're going to paint two coats make sure they're completely dry before we move on to that next step. The paint is very dry and now this is where the crack in the bowl kind of gave me the idea. I'm going to go ahead and crackle this bowl just like I did in my last DIY um, tutorial. I did the crackle technique so taking some Dollar Tree glue I'm just going to cover this with a heavy coat like everywhere. It doesn't have to go in the same direction just coat it really really good. Then you're going to let that glue dry for about two to three minutes. It's not very long. Then take a lighter color, which I'm using the plaster Waverly chalk paint, and you're going to paint one really thick coat on top. And from that point, you're going to take your heat source, which I'm using my heat gun on the high setting, which is 680 degrees, and you just start blasting it all over and it will start cracking. I did have people ask me, um, can you use a hair dryer? I honestly don't know the answer to that because my video, like I said, my last video was the first time I've done this technique. Um, I don't know. So if you've done the crackle with the hair dryer, if you'll comment down below so that others can read and see if that's possible, that would be great. Um, but yeah, super simple. Now, if you wanted to do this crackle technique, basically here's what it is. 
whatever color you want the cracks to be, that's your first coat of paint. So for instance, I wanted mine to be darker, so that's why I painted it brown. But if you wanted the cracks to be white, you could paint it white and then paint over it with gray. You, you don't have to do a dark color as your first color, it's up to you. But whatever your first paint color is, that's what color your cracks will be. My original plan was to leave this uh, as is, but what I ended up doing was taking a piece of nautical rope, I unbraided it so that the pieces weren't as bulky, and I'm just going to take this and wrap it around the base. So really, I didn't need to crackle this and paint this part, um, but I didn't know I was going to be wrapping it with rope until at the very end of the project. So I'm just going to wrap it, and then this project is all finished. For the second DIY, I will be working with this sign, the a year of first sign. I'm going to take off the chalk and cut off the twine. Once that's done, I'm going to take some Waverly White chalk paint and I'm going to just paint the front of the sign with one coat of the paint. Then I'm going to take some large popsicle sticks that I've had. I believe I got these from Walmart. And what I decided I wanted to do was to make a faux shiplap wall on top of this sign. And so I'm cutting and kind of making a pattern, but not really making a pattern and cutting them down. And then before I glued them down, I grabbed a wooden bunny that I've had sitting on my counter for forever and decided I needed to use it. <laughs> and I set it on top. And then after I put the bunny on top, there were a couple places where I felt like I needed some more, I guess, cuts in the faux wood. And so I went ahead and marked it with the pencil and then cut them down. And then once that was done, I was ready to glue these down straight to the board with hot glue. And then I'm just going to take the Waverly White chalk paint again and paint over all of my popsicle sticks. Before I tell you how I did my bunny, please draw your eyes to the top left corner. You're going to notice that my sign is now gray. Um, I totally changed my plan. I originally, I was going with the pastel theme and that's why I did the white. I was going to make it kind of like that farm fresh carrot where the white was going to be the distress part coming through, but I changed my mind. So I painted over it with the steel um, color Waverly chalk paint and that's where it's at now. Now as far as the bunny goes, I'm just taking this piece of fabric that I got in a pack from Walmart quite a while ago and I put my bunny on the back of it. I'm tracing around it with a fabric marker. Then I'll cut the bunny out. Once the bunny's cut out, I'm going to go ahead and use my Arteza paint marker and go around the edge of the bunny as well as get the wrinkles out of my bunny by using some wrinkle spray because I don't want to pull out my iron. And then from there, I'm ready to attach my fabric to the bunny and I'm just going to use my Gorilla Glue Repositional Adhesive Spray to get it attached to the bunny. And then the bunny is all finished. Moving on to distressing my sign. So you guys know this technique, I taught it to you. If you did not see that video, I will link it down below. Taking a votive candle, I'm just gonna rub it all over my sign. Once that's done, I'm going to take some plaster Waverly chalk paint and paint over the entire sign. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit, get it kind of tacky, close to dry, but not dry. And then I'm just gonna take a scraper and I'm gonna start scraping it everywhere to get that chipped distressed look and then once that's done I am ready to start putting my sign together. I have this bunny sign left over from the three pack that Dollar Tree had. So I'm gonna take some of this galvanized tin paint and I'm just gonna paint over it to kind of take some of the shine off. And then once that's done, I'm going to take a piece of this white leftover fence from a previous DIY I did. And I'm gonna hot glue that down to my sign. Then on top of the fence, I'm going to hot glue down my bunny. 
Once that's done, I'm going to grab two of the Dollar Tree carrots that I had laying around, as well as the bunny sign, and I'm gonna glue those down, as well as attach a bow um, made out of twine to the center of the bunny's neck. For the next DIY, I will be working with this Bless Our Home sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop off the little metal plate here. Then I'm gonna give it a good coat of the Waverly White Chalk Paint. While that's drying, I'm going to take a bunch of raffia and I'm going to take about four to five pieces and knot them off on one end. And I'm basically just making bundles of raffia. And what I'll end up doing is taping some down to the table and I'm just going to be making a weave. So I'm gonna go over, under, over, under and until I get a good a size amount of a square of this weaved raffia. Now it's time to get this attached to my little sign. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the knot off at the top and I'm just going to glue these little sections, hot glue them directly onto my sign. From that point, then it's just a matter of wrapping all the ends around to the back and securing it with hot glue. Um, it was not too tricky once I got the first little row secured there at the top but um, the back's not gonna be that pretty, not gonna lie, it looks kind of messy, so if you wanna take a piece of craft paper or a piece of felt or something and put it across the back, you might wanna do that. Um, but pretty simple to do, just need some hot glue and definitely some sort of silicone spatula because you will burn your fingers if you don't have it. So I decided I was going to go ahead and just freehand the word bloom on here and instead of painting it, I will be using my scorch marker again. I did use that in the last DIY where I burned a little bunny onto a spoon with my scorch marker. And what I realized is when you use the scorch marker on paint, it actually burns more brown than black, which was fine, but I didn't like the brown. So what I ended up doing after I burned the word bloom in there, I went in with one coat of the Waverly chalk paint and then I went back and sanded it and I like that look a little better. It made it more distressed, burned looking. So that's what I ended up doing. Then once that was finished, I was ready to go ahead and just glue in some little pieces of eucalyptus plants that I had. One of my favorite things to do as far as saving money on greenery is when the garlands are on sale at Hobby Lobby, I buy a huge eucalyptus garland for $9.99 and literally I can work off that one thing for forever. So it tends to work out to be way cheaper than getting greenery things like that from Dollar Tree or Walmart is if you can catch them on sale. After the greenery was in, I added two eye hooks to the top of my sign and then I went ahead and tied it off with a piece of twine. For the final DIY, I was determined to use the other challenge items that Caitlin sent me. So what I'm gonna do is break these down. I'm gonna pop off the little animals and take out the backs. Once that's done on two of the frames, I'm gonna pull out the little prongs and then I'm gonna paint them all with Waverly White chalk paint. I'm also painting just one of the backs that I popped out of the frames. Now taking 12 popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree, I'm going to be using four popsicle sticks on each side of these triangles. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach all three of these together like this by using popsicle sticks. So I'm just going to start on one side and kind of work my way down the popsicle sticks. So I glued them on the base piece first, 
then I glue them to this middle piece and then I will put the top piece on and then I'll flip it to the next side and again do the same process for the other two sides. The popsicle sticks are on so now I flipped it over and I'm taking three of these wooden beads. They are flat on one side. I got these at Hobby Lobby quite a while ago and I'm just going to glue these directly to the base of this. Then once that's finished I'm going to go ahead and go in and paint the popsicle sticks that I added to it. And then my final step will be to take some burlap ribbon that I had left over from Christmas. I always buy this um, when the Christmas clearance goes because you can get it for dirt cheap and so I'm just going to take this burlap ribbon it actually worked out to be the perfect size to line the inside of my little planter and I'm just going to go in and secure it with some hot glue all along the inside and then my planter is finished. After looking at the inside of it I did decide to do one more step and that was just to take some of these regular sized popsicle sticks also from Dollar Tree and I painted one side white and then what I'm going to do is just put two of these at the top of each side of the triangle to kind of clean up the edges because it was looking just kind of rough and um, I just wanted those to be a little bit tidier. All right, before we get into today's t-shirt guessing game, I wanted to quickly say thank you to the seven ladies who participated. I absolutely am so grateful that you guys wanted to participate. You made it so fun. And if you are new and visiting from any of their channels, please say hi down below. I would love to say hi back to you and I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss any of my future DIYs and home decor. And finally, down in the comments, let me know if Caitlin had sent you this box what would you have made? Was there something in there that jumped out at you and you thought, ooh, I would make a fill in the blank. Let me know down below. I always like to get other people's perspectives. Now, what is my t-shirt today? Here's what you're gonna do. It's a movie this time. The last shirt I wore was Friends. I asked you guys what characters you like. Mine was Chandler. He's my guy. Now, this is a movie, so tell me what the movie is and then tell me what character you love by saying team, and then fill in the character's name. Got it? All right, here's the shirt. It says, talk to me, goose. All right, there's the shirt. So tell me the movie and tell me what team you are down below in the comments. Let me know what you would have made with some of those items in the box, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.